Hello. Good morning. Is Ellen there, please? This is she. Hi, Ellen. This is Mitch Kumstein calling from. Uh, I'm uh, in Human Resources. Yeah, great. So have I been hired? Well, you see, that's why I'm calling you here, Ellen. Uh, we've done three interviews with you so far. Mm-hmm. And I thought the interviews, I've, I've looked at all the reports from the interviewers, and I thought they were all A1. I thought things were just going along great. Oh, great. I'm really glad to hear that. Well, unfortunately, I've got some bad news for you. Uh, and, and that's why I'm calling you at home, and I hope you don't mind, but I, I thought maybe we could talk a little more freely. Um... We've had some disturbing reports about you from your previous employer that I'd like to get down to the bottom of. Uh, what, what do you mean? What? Well, we talked to a number of people at your, your current work, uh-huh. and we've had some bad things mentioned about you and about your work ethic. What? And, exactly, and I thought I'd like to address those with you and, and get your slant on them. Yeah, I, yeah, I would like to talk about that with you. Okay, uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, reports came from your current supervisor. Was it? It was Justine. Yes, Justine? yes, it was Justine. Oh my gosh! Well, I, I'm surprised, but at the same time, I'm not really too surprised. Um, now, now, what do you mean by that? Well. I'm, I'm telling you this in confidence. I, don't, I really don't want this to get around, but... Well, yeah, but, but you, you're um, just addressing the charges that she leveled on you. Yeah. She said you were very incompetent. And it's really actually the other way around. She really doesn't do anything. She sets up meetings. I do all of her work. Uh-huh. I mean, she's, like, taking off time everywhere, here and there, taking three-hour lunches. I'm really... I'm doing all the work, and she has the title. You know how that is sometimes. And, yeah, she gets the money, she gets the title, I do all of the work. I think that she probably doesn't want me to leave because then she'll get found out. Oh, so you you think she's submarining you on your job application here? Absolutely, absolutely. But, you know, normally I wouldn't be that disturbed by it because, you know, we we, we went through our process and and our interviews and everything, but Uh we had a couple other reports from people at work that, you know, brought, brought into question your work ethic and your attitude at work. And a number of your coworkers. As a matter of fact, one of the people that you have down as a reference that you may want to look into. You, you've got to be kidding. No, uh, one, one, one of the guys you have down as a reference. Was it, was it Bill? Yes, it Bill. was. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. You know, he's, we're friendly. I like him a lot. But he and Justine are really, I mean, of everyone at my company... They are probably the laziest people work-wise. Well, I can't yeah, but this is, this is would... the guy that you had down as a reference. I, I mean, that's because personally we get along really well. He knows that I work really hard. Yeah. And I figured that he would vouch. For, I can't believe this. I have helped him out of a bind a million times. I've helped him get in things when he's running late, which is all the time. Uh-huh. I, I take on a lot of his workload, too. I can't believe this. Well, Ellen, Ellen, maybe you can believe that Bill and Justine and all your co-workers at your current job wanted to send you off in fine style because they said to give you a call. It's Lamont and Tonelli on Dirty Friday. You're on KSJO. You're on the radio. Oh, my God. Good morning. Oh, my God. Ellen, do you, I, have, do you have anything to say to them? They're, they're listening? Yep. You bet. Bill and Justine and the whole gang. Oh, my God. They wanted to say nice working with you. Yeah. I am so sorry. Hey, El- Ellen, hold on the line, okay? We, uh, we may have something something for you. Wow. <laughs> Ellen, you there? Are you still there? Yeah, I'm, yeah. Well, hold on the line, all right? We'll, uh, we'll set you up with a little something. Remember when you point that finger, Ellen, oh, there's three oh, fingers oh, pointing oh, back right at you. Oh, oh, oh. Hello? Good morning. I'm looking for Holly, please. Is she? Hi, Holly. Um, uh, this is Harold Forskin calling from the uh, law firm of... Honey? Hello? Uh, my name is Harold Forskin. Uh-huh. And I'm calling in regards to uh, an accident involving your vehicle six months ago. Um, you, you, uh, you have a, um, a, uh, a Camry. Right. And it was driven by one Kyle. Right. Is that correct? Yes. I'm now, right. now who is Kyle? Is that your boyfriend? That's my boyfriend. Okay. But it is your car. It's my car, yeah. 
Now, my clients um, have piled up a number of bills over the last six months for their medical expenses. And uh, your insurance company is not covering these expenses. Mm, no, I have insurance, but Kyle was driving, so it was my understanding that uh, they were going to cover the expenses. No, no. you see, Holly, your insurance company is not covering this because he was a suspended driver at the time, and he should not have been driving your vehicle. But I have insurance on my vehicle. Yes, I understand that, but your insurance, because you let an uninsured driver drive your vehicle, says you're liable for these expenses. Um, there must be some mistake or something, because I just spoke to someone last week, and I understood everything was going to be fine and that they were going to cover the expenses. Well, no, ma'am, we, we, we talked to your insurance company, and they have refused to pay out on the claim. So because of this... We have the expenses from the damage to the vehicle. My clients have had to go to chiropractors to fix up their neck problems. And, and the bills are adding up, and we want to know where the money's coming from. So far, our bills are totaling over $27,000. I can't afford that. <laughs> I don't have that kind of money. I don't have that much money. Well, well ma'am, you should have thought of that before you let your boyfriend, Kyle, drive your vehicle. But... But it wasn't me. I, I didn't get in the accident. But no, but you're liable for your vehicle, ma'am. That's what I'm trying to tell you. But I'm insured. I'm insured, and I wasn't driving. But ma'am, was that's why I'm calling, because your insurance company is is refusing to pay out on the claim. I, I don't have that kind of money. I don't I don't even know how I would how I would pay pay that much money. That's uh, Well, I, what we can do is put you on some kind of payment plan. Uh, I, it would take me about, like... 60 years to pay off that kind of money. I, Excuse me, ma'am? It would take me about 60 years to, take up, to pay off that much money. Well, then we had better make some other arrangements because my clients need $27,000. And the bills are adding up. I have a little girl, and I, I have a lot of expenses. I just, there's, there's no possible way that I can come up with that kind of money. So you're going to have to speak to my claim adjuster, and you're going to have to work that out with them. Well, you know what we can do, Holly, is tell you that you're on the radio. It's Dirty Friday on KSTL. Kyle said to give you a call. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. How did you know? What, who? Kyle, your boyfriend, said to give you a call. Oh, that little sh Oh, my. <laughs> no, I think that's what she was doing in her pants. <laughs> I love Dirty Friday, man. Way to go, Kyle. I love Dirty Friday. And more of them than you improve the Lamont Tinelli Show. We're trying to cram as many calls as we can in this morning as we rock on. Hello. Good morning. I'm looking for Hugh. Yeah, that's me. Hi, Hugh. How are you this morning? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Good. This is uh, Bill calling from the uh, Davidson. All right. Is my bike ready to go? No, uh, that, that's why I'm calling Hugh. I hope you're sitting down. We, yeah. We've had a bit of a problem here at the shop. And someone broke in last night. We just rolled in here about 15 minutes ago. All right. And the police will be on their way. They should be here very shortly as well. Police for what? Well, we've had some problems. Uh, your bike is not in the shop. What? They basically cleaned out most of the things in the shop. And your yeah, bike... Yeah, shitting me. What? No, your, your bike was one of them, Hugh. What? God damn, sons of bitches. You know who did it? Well, no, Hugh, I just got to the shop right now. Well, God damn, that's my bike, son. That's my Harley. I, Hugh, I understand that. God. And and the police will be here. We'll be able to give you a full credit report and full police report as we make our way through this. But I'm calling all the people that had their bikes in the shop. You're, well, not, hell, you're, you're not the only one. Well, that's my life, damn it. You better find out who took my goddamn bike. Hugh, God I, I, Hugh I understand that. And it's certainly no fault of ours. Someone came in here and cleaned out everything in the shop. Well, God damn sons of bitches. Somebody better find out what the f <laughs> uh oh man. Okay, Sentra had to cut him off. We're uh -oh. going to have to call him back. Yes, I think we do. We'll call Hugh back. <laughs> we'll call him back in moments. Let's let him stew a bit. Let him know what happened to his bike. <laughs> His Harley, that's his life. Oh, that's great. Yo. Good morning, is uh, Hugh there? Yeah, it's Hugh. Why'd you hang up on me, man? Yeah, call once again from... 
Jefferson? Yeah, why'd you hang up on me, man? Well, Hugh, the reason I hung, I thought you hung up on us. No, I ain't hanging up well, on you. Well, you must have been cut off or something. Well, I'm putting on my goddamn boots to come down there and kick some ass. No, look, Hugh, it doesn't do any good to get overly excited over this. Um, the, the police have come down, they've taken a look at the crime scene. Right. And they think it might have been an inside job. Well, God damn. Unfortunately, unfortunately, your Harley's gone and about ten other customers. Right. Their, what are we going to do about that? Well, I looked into our insurance, and I don't think we're covered for that. However, what the if, 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 if you're, no, you take it easy. If you read, if you read the details on your service contract, God damn the hell. We're not responsible for damage while it's in the shop. However, however, you have insurance on this. Do you not, Hugh? Yeah, what am I supposed to do, though? Well, God, you, you, you should be able to claim this on your insurance. Yeah, we'll, we'll God, give you, we'll, Hugh. You will give you the police report number. Right. And you'll be able to claim it through your insurance. Yeah, wait. I'm coming down there. I want to see you. Who, who is this? I want to see you. No, my name is Bill. Bill God damn, Bill. I never. I don't think I know you, but I'm coming down there, damn it. Well, no, Hugh, he, 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 it doesn't help to come down here in a fit of rage. Yeah, well, I'm what not I'd like you to do, he, Hugh, what I'd like you to do. Damn, Harley. What? I know it's your Harley. What I'd what? like you to do is just take it easy. All right. And say hi to the guys at work. It's what? Lamont and Tonelli calling from KSJL. Hugh, you're on the air. It's Dirty Friday. God damn. You, you? God damn. Uh, you? God damn. God I'm damn. I ain't going out today. Hey, I'm God my, damn. God damn. Oh, yeah. God. I'm taking my boots off, boy. God damn. Your Harley's okay, bro. Your Harley's okay. God. My Harley's okay. Oh, yeah. The hog is okay, baby. Took my wife. Damn. <laughs> Took my wife. Well, hold on the line, Hugh. We got a little something for you, okay? Right. Do we still have the Lamont Tinelli Harley T-shirt, Sully? Yes, we do. Get him one, okay? There we go. Right. Hugh, we're gonna get you one of the Lamont Tinelli Harley T-shirts. Yeah, that'll work. All right, bro. All right, man. All right. Don't worry, your bike's hey, we'll okay. We'll get you tickets to the monster truck tomorrow night at the Santa Clara County Fairgrounds. <laughs> They'll have that fixed in time. Don't, Don't miss worry. next hour. We call Hugh back and tell him where his dentist is missing teeth. <laughs> God damn! God damn! My bike. Did call her sister and dick with her this morning. Hello? Good morning. Is Beth there, please? Uh, this is Shay. Hi, Beth. How are you? This is Officer uh, Dick Zinya calling from the Sheriff's Department. Okay. What can I do for you? Well, I'm calling in reference to Vanessa. Okay. Uh, it seems Vanessa escaped late last night. Oh, no. And we're wondering if you have any knowledge on her whereabouts whatsoever. Oh. Uh. That stupid bitch. You know, she talked about escaping. I said, no, stay where you are. Oh. So hold it. She she had talked about escaping? Yeah, I, I didn't think she was going to go through with it. When, now, when did she bring that up to you, ma'am? Last time I spoke with her. The last time you spoke with her. And did you report that to anybody at all? No, I, no, no. Um, well, we may be looking at a serious problem here, Elizabeth. Um, what is, she's such a stupid bitch. So she now, really ha is. so has has she has she made an appearance at your place yet? Because we have good reason to believe that that's where she's going. To my place? Yes, ma'am. No, no, she hasn't turned up here. Now, if uh, oh my god, and she made reference to the fact that she was going to escape. Uh, I'm not too sure now. I think so. Well, did she tell you that she was going to make a break for it, and you what you thought you talked her out of it? I thought I talked her out of it. Did she mention where she would be going at all? Does she have any friends that you know of? I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, she may. She may go to a friend's house. She has a lot of friends. Now, Elizabeth, uh, Beth, let me ask you this. If I know it's your sister. Yeah. But if, if she does show up at your place, will you give us a call? Absolutely. I'll turn her in instantly. I, I, I don't need this. I don't need this type of trouble. This is bullshit. This is ridiculous. Well, Elizabeth, all I can yeah. tell you is that your sister, Vanessa, yeah. thinks very highly of you because she wants to give you a call this morning. It's Lamont and Tonelli on Dirty Friday on KSJO Radio. you got to be kidding me. Uh, Beth, you're on oh the air. Oh, my God. You're on the air. It's Dirty Friday. <laughs> and she's listening right now. Hey, what did you call her again? I called her... Uh... <laughs> A bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like such a fool. <laughs>
<laughs> Elizabeth, yeah. but she did talk about breaking out, did she? Uh, no. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got me. <laughs> Beth, you hold on, okay? We're going to set you up with a little something this morning on Dirty Friday. <laughs> All right. Sisterly love. It's family <laughs> love on the radio this morning. Oh, what a good way to start off Dirty Friday. Friday the 13th, Dirty Friday. Good morning. Good morning. I'm looking for Joe. This, this is Joe. Hi, Joe. This is uh, Sergeant Unstinks calling from the uh, department. And I'm calling in regards to a stolen vehicle that we're investigating uh, from yesterday morning. Um, you mean Terry's car? Y yes. Um, uh, uh, Terry reported a stolen vehicle yesterday right. morning. Right. And um, right, we we, well, we found that everything's okay. I think. Well, now, sir, sir, can you fill me in on what happened? Um, well, he just he. he the vehicle. The vehicle was reported stolen yesterday morning around 10 a.m. Is that correct? Um, I don't know when he reported it, but uh, he found it. He found it about noon, and uh, I thought everything was. It was. Um, uh, it was April Fool's. It was an April Fool's joke. So we were just, you know. So, sir, so, now, now so, you were the one. You moved the car. Is that correct? Well, I, I mean, I wasn't by. My, I mean, I moved it. Your was, your friend Terry reported the car stolen. Right. Because the car was taken off his driveway. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. It was April. It was April first. You know. Uh huh. You, I you, understand. I'm looking at the date. Yes, I know. Okay, well, and so you moved the car. I'm just, I'm just uh, going over some facts yeah, here. All right, I, I know. I, I was the one who moved. It was a bunch of guys that we weren't. Well, I wasn't alone. You know, I mean, there were guys that were, but I was the one who moved the car. We, we, as a practical joke, we moved it around the corner. Um, you know, he, God, he got all weird about it, and we, you know, April Fools, and we told him where it was, and, but I didn't know he had called the police. Uh, Sir, the car was reported stolen, and I'm following up on a stolen vehicle report, and now a bogus criminal report. No, I don't know if you realize this, but this car is still deemed to be a stolen vehicle. Even though he's, he's already called? Well, yes, sir. He, he, he found the car again. It was right. returned to him. Right. But the car was still stolen from his property. Well, really, I mean, it was. I guess it technically... Well, it technically, was, now, were you the one that actually got in the car and moved the car and took the keys? Yes, I was the one that moved the car. Sir, do you realize that you are you, you committed Grand Theft Auto? Well, I mean... If if I was stealing a car, yeah, but I mean on April Fools, I mean it's practical. People do weird stuff all the time April first. I mean, but this, the, uh, your intentions uh, were for a joke, sir. But this right. is not a laughing matter. This is Grand Theft Auto. Well, the every, car was moved around the corner. It was taken from his property. The keys were taken from Terry. You know, this stuff happens to me. April Fools, yeah, I, they're always jerking me around, and this is my turn to get back to him. And so, I, sir, do you realize you could face five years in the penitentiary oh, for this? Well, I. I wasn't alone. Now, I mean, you were not alone. You, no, you had no, friends it, involved with this. Is right. this correct? But you were the one that moved the car. Yeah. Well, I, that's still, I mean, I, I mean, Terry told you that it was, uh, did he tell you it was a practical joke? And then did he ever get back to you guys and let you know that? I mean, Sir, told he reported the car was found a little after noon yesterday. Don't you guys have a sense of humor down there? I mean, don't you guys do it Sir, in your the, office? Sir, the, the San Jose Police Department does not view this as being funny. You moved a vehicle. Oh, God. We had a police report oh, filed. We lost man hours for the investigation team. We there had to send go. a cruiser down there. Who's going to compensate the city yeah. for lost man hours? Uh, boy, you know what? I I never looked. I'm sorry. I didn't. Sir, look we're going to process. We're going to process this who, who, stolen vehicle. Who was this, uh, officer? Listen, if we can just sit down and talk. I mean, I I, I can go through it with you. I mean, I well, I understand I what happened. I, I understand I, you moved the vehicle as a joke. Right. But, sir, this is no laughing matter. As a matter of fact, let me tell you something, Joe. Your friend Terry, yeah, he went through hell, and that's why I said to give you a call this morning. It's Lamont Antonelli on KSJO. Oh, you, hey, you guys can't do this. Is Good Friday. You can't do this. You're away here. You can't be doing this. Time. You're on the air. It's Dirty Friday. How does how does that shoe fit on the other foot? <laughs> that son of a bitch. Oh, God. Terry said he wanted to teach you a lesson for dicking with him on April Fool's Day. Hook, line, and sinker, and I think I smell poo poo in the pants. <laughs> hey, oh. hey, hey, Joe, what is this about trying to drag some other guys down on you? Yeah. Hey, well, next year. We'll get, I'll, wait till April, I'll wait till April 1st. Unlike Terry, who will go all year long and get away with you. <laughs> hey, Joe, you hold on the line, okay? All right, thank you, guys. It's 715. We are The Rock. Lamont and Tonelli, 1-800-575-KSJL. Hello? Good morning. I'm looking for Ellen, please. Uh, she's not in right now. Uh, who is this? Uh, hi, this is, uh, Terry. I'm, uh, her personal trainer at the gym. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
And uh, can I leave a message? Who's this? Um, this is Chad. Hi, Chad. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. good. Are you a roommate of hers? I'm her husband. Oh, your husband. Okay, great. Can you leave a message for her? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would like to change our workout time. I can't make it at 4 o'clock. Okay. So can you uh, ask her to call me back and uh, see if 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock tonight is fine? 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock tonight on a Friday night? Yeah. I can't make it around 4, but that would be perfect for me if it's okay with her schedule. Well, she doesn't... Who works out at 8 o'clock on a Friday night? That's, that's awfully convenient, isn't it, for you? <laughs> well, well look, 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 sir, what, what do you mean it's convenient for me? Well, I, I mean, she's been, she, cause she, how, she's been with, how long has she been training with you? For quite a while now, right? For a couple weeks, yeah. Yeah, and I'm definitely getting the feeling now that this is getting a little strange. Well, what, now, what, what do you mean it's getting strange? Well, you, you think something's going on between me and your wife? Well, it seems a little odd that you want to change the appointment to 8 o'clock tonight, on a Friday night especially. Now, look, look sir, if you think there's something going on, between me and your wife, yeah, you, you could be, there, there, nothing farther from the truth can be true. As, as a matter of fact, I, I can't believe you, th you think there's something going on between us. Well, they just, I, look, you have yeah, no I mean, reason. Honestly, you yes, have, I think, no, I, I think sir, you have other sir, intentions. No, look, sir, you have no reason to be jealous. In fact, as, I wish you, could you do me a favor? What? Could, could, and it's very tough for me to bring up with your wife, and, and maybe you could do me a favor and bring it up with her. Could you do something about her hygiene? Are you What did you just ask me? To, you could, you me bring, to could you bring up to your wife, and I, say, I don't know how to approach you. I've only been with her a couple months, working out at the gym. But I've got to tell you, the other day I was holding her feet when she was doing sit-ups, and, and it smelled like the crapper on a tuna boat. There were people moving from all over in the gym... People were leaving like crazy. When she starts working out, it starts stinking up a storm. This is my wife you're talking about. Well, I know, sir, but I, I you know, no, no, listen, no, no. Look, sir, you have no reason to be jealous. And in fact, I, I wish you'd do me this favor. I'm going to climb through this phone and come down there and bash your head in. Well, sir, sir, hey, li listen, listen, Chad, people in the gym, when she's working out, we're thinking it's the fish market and they're looking for lunch. Look, look, buddy. I'm gonna, I'm calling. I'm gonna call Ellen up now, and I'm gonna talk to her. Then I'm gonna come down look, there with her, look, and I'm gonna look, kick your sir, ass. Sir, 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 sir. Look, I, I didn't mean to insult you, but, but maybe a little FDS or a douche on your wife's part can make all our lives all easier. I think you'd be getting a, a, the better part of this deal too. I'm gonna make a phone call in minute. <laughs> <sighs> okay, we gotta call back in a matter of moments before hey, no it runs to the gym and gets the guy. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. Hey, is this Chad? Yes. Hey, Chad, look, Terry called once again from the gym. And I'm sorry if you took offense to, to what I said about your wife and her personal body odor. I, I'm going to call my lawyer. Not only that, I'm going to sue you for defamation or, or libel Chad, or whatever Chad, the Chad, hell it is. Chad, I, Chad, 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 before you go crazy, let me just say that your wife, great looking gal, tight ass, and told me to call you. It's Lamont Antonelli on 92 KSJO. You're on the air. It's Dirty Friday. Dead. Chad? Good for us. Not good for him this morning. <laughs> Randy Kirk coming up later on. Hello? Good morning. I'm looking for Graham. Please. This is Graham. Hi, Graham. Uh, this is Officer uh, Zinya calling from the uh, uh, Santa Clara apartment. And I'm calling um, in regards to a number of reports we've had concerning the shooting of wild boars in the area. There have been a few wild boars around my place, yeah. Okay, now, Graham, uh, you, so you, you do not deny that you've shot a few wild boars in the past week or two? I said there are a few wild boars around where I live. Uh-huh. Well, you see, Graham, the reason I'm calling, uh, we've got a, a bit of a health scare here. Concerning the wild boars. Oh, really? And the, uh, the health scare centers around to a disease that a number of these boars have been carrying that we've uh, come in contact with. And it's in your area. So what kind of disease do these wild, wild boars have? Well, that's why it's imperative that I, that I check with you. Have you shot a few wild boars as of late? I killed one that was in my yard. Okay. And did you, did you consume the meat from the animal? Yeah, we didn't let it go to waste. We ate it. Oh, my God. It's What's worth... the problem? When, when, when exactly was this? Oh, about a week ago. About a week ago. And I told you about it. Have you been feeling all right? Yeah, I feel fine. 
And how many people had the meat from this boar? Oh, about eight. Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, I'm going to have to get the names of the people that actually ate the meat. Um, well, what's, this, what's the problem here? Well, Graham, it seems that some of the, uh, the boars in the area have uh, been carrying the syphilis scrotonitis. The what? Syphilis scrotonitis gene. What the hell is that? Well, they, they've got the syphilis scrotonitis germ, and it, it's, you, you can pass this along just by eating it. So I can, I can, uh, I can catch this syphilis from eating a pig? I mean, that... Yes, sir. Is this the kind of syphilis, I'm, I mean, like sex kind of syphilis? Yes, sir. The pigs? Well, that, that's how you know how they got their name. Pigs. you got to be kidding me. Uh-uh. Did you eat a pig lately? Wait a minute. I got syphilis from eating a pig. Yes, sir. If, if, this, if this pig had the syphilis germ... Well, I feel fine, so apparently it didn't have it. Now, have you noticed anything in your genital area? Well, like a burning sensation? Now, come on. Now, I ate the pig. I didn't have sex with it. Well, no, sir. That These genes are carried in the pig meat. No, I haven't felt any burning sensation. All right. Now, Graham, it's very important that you give me the names of the people who ate this meat, and we're going to have to bring you in for some testing. Well, let me get a hold of them. Why don't you give me a phone number and I'll, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll, All get, right. I'll get a hold of these people and have them contact you. Absolutely. Graham, it's 92.3 KSJL Lamont and Tonelli. You're on the air. It's Dirty Friday. Jesus. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Syphilis from eating a pig. <laughs> Hey, Graham. That's normally where you get it, isn't it? Your, 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 your brother Joe wanted to set you up on Dirty Friday. You big pig eater. Said you had a big pig barbecue. Hey, God, this wasn't supposed to get out. <laughs> you have anything to say to your brother? <laughs> yeah, time to lick me. <laughs> hey, Graham, hold on the line. We got a little something for you, okay? All righty. All righty. It's 736, Lamont and Tonelli, Raymond Stingin' Bird. Hello? Good morning. Is Wendy please. You're speaking to Wendy. Hi, Wendy. This is Jose Cuervo calling from the uh, Latin American Relief Effort. Hello. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. How are you doing today? It's great. Thank you. Good. Uh, by the way, I'd like to thank you for your effort this past weekend. Uh, I've been talking to a few of the organizers down at the, uh, the uh, relief effort. They said you did a wonderful job for us. You're kidding. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now, My pleasure. Wendy, the reason I'm calling here... Uh, we want to know if you can do, uh, just go a little further for us on the uh, relief effort. I'd be glad to help any way I can. Okay, that is wonderful. Uh, we are billeting people uh, in our country that have been affected by the, uh, by the uh, catastrophe and uh, by the floods. Oh, yeah. And we'd like to know, Wendy, if you're interested in, uh, if you could possibly billet a family. You mean sponsor the, sponsor the family financially or your what are we saying exactly here? Have them in my home? Uh, yes, ma'am. We'd like to know if, if you'd like to have the family stay in your home. Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, I live in a pretty modest house. I, I mean... Uh-huh. Well, it's well, definitely <laughs> better than what they're living in right now, Wendy. Oh, I'm sure, but I just, you know, I, this is a decision that I wouldn't be able to make. I'm, I don't think this is something my husband would go for, really. You don't think your husband would go for this? Mm, I think I'd have a pretty difficult time talking him into that when I... Um, yeah. Oh, this, this, that's this. too bad. Why, why, why do you think your husband wouldn't go? Could you at least broach the subject with him? <laughs> okay. How do I explain this to you? Um, you know, I, I don't think I can even do that. Um, he has a... He, this effort that I've been making with the, the relief organization down there has been a sole effort on my part. Something he's just not interested in participating in, and he's got personal reasons for that. Your husband has personal reasons for, <laughs> for not getting involved in the relief effort? Yeah. Even though you're, you're, what, are you sneaking out of the house to do it? No, 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 no. I mean, he's aware that I'm doing it, but it's just something he doesn't want to be involved in. He's made that very clear. It's, it's, it's a personal issue, something with him and his family that happened a long time ago. Him and his family, could you elaborate on that? Uh, I prefer not to elaborate. <laughs> um, bottom line, his sister was impregnated by a Spanish gentleman a few years back, and ever since he has had absolutely nothing nice to say about that culture. Any culture, <laughs> Spanish, Mexican, in general. 
So, I mean, honest to God, the, even his language, the way he refers to those people, the, the words he uses, it's 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 embar- This is embarrassing for me to even discuss with you. So, but, but I have to be really honest. I mean, he's got a great deal of prejudice. I mean, I I can't tell you how many times I hear him refer to to a Mexican or Spanish person as a beaner or some other incredibly ridiculous. My God. <laughs> That is this is a completely embarrassing, but, I, but I'm afraid that it would be out of the question. I, so I, we, we I, I couldn't can't... have, like, a family of six live with you for, like, three months. <laughs> Absolutely not. Oh. Absolutely not. And, and John would just flip. John is your husband? Yes, he is. Okay. John is the bean hater. Well, well he does have personal reasons, and I, and I certainly don't use that language, but I guess it's that, okay. Yeah, well, that would be let me just fair. say one thing to John, and, and Wendy, you sound like a very nice woman, but John, John makes me very mad. Well, it makes me angry, too, but... And Yvette is your sister, is that correct? Yes. Well, she sent to give you a call this morning. Wendy, it's Lamont Antonelli on KXJO oh, Radio. God. It's Dirty Friday. You're on the radio. Hold on. Everything I just said. Everything you just said. <laughs> yes. Is Yvette and John together in on this? Or is John going to hear about this? No, John may hear know. about this. And right oh now, it's just God. Yvette that told us to sting you. <laughs> she said you're a very kind-hearted person. Oh, well, send her my love. Really. <laughs> this is just too much. Hold on the line, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Did you say embarrassment? Oh, slightly embarrassed. <laughs> Hold on the line. we got a little something for you. <laughs> Adios, Wendy. Adios. KSJO traffic for the Dirty Friday morning commute. 575-KSJO. He has hung her out to dry. We can ask for her. The mother-in-law. Hello. Good morning. I'm looking for Rita. Please. Uh, she's not in right now. Can I take a message? Yeah, sure. This is uh, Harry Scrotum calling from uh, Procter & Gamble. Uh-huh. And I'm calling in regards to a um, uh, uh, an information sheet she filled out concerning one of our products. We have oh. a brand new product coming on the market. Well, uh, she's, she's not in right now. I could, well, like, what's it for? Uh, well, you see, we, your market is going to be a, a test market for us for a, uh, a brand new adult undergarment for incontinence. Really? Yeah. And um, she filled out a questionnaire... Oh, and my God. We, oh, my God. Are you serious? Yeah. And uh, we'd like to know if she's interested in, in being part of our test. Hey, you want to, like, use her like a guinea pig or something like that? or? Well, sir, we, we, we don't like to refer to the patients as guinea pigs. Well, I, I tell you what, if she doesn't want to sign up for it, I'll sign her up for it. Because, I mean, the whole house is smelling like urine. I mean, my, my favorite chair is a potty. I mean, it's, it's amazing. I, that's, it's embarrassing. So, uh, sir, sir, so you, you, you yourself would sign her up for something like this? Oh, in a, in a moment. I, I mean, hold a, hold a gun to her head and make her sign it. I'm really, it's, 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 you know, the problem is something else. It, my wife and I, we've been taking care of her for about nine months now. At first, you know, I thought it was just going to be a couple of weeks, you know, and then this problem starts, and next thing you know, you know, you, you can't sit anywhere in the house. It, it's amazing. So she, she does have a problem. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that, that, that put, puts it mildly. Uh, you go out in public, it's, we were at Nordstrom's two weeks ago, and uh, all of a sudden you look down and there's this puddle forming. You know, it, it's embarrassing. You've got to call a guy over, and clean it up. It's, it's really embarrassing. I mean, but, I tell you what, I, you guys don't uh, uh, do anything for, like, homes and stuff, put people in rest homes, things like that. No, sir, I sir, would sign her up right away. Sir, sir we, we are in the business of selling personal care products. Well, if you could just send a truckload... Uh, yeah, I'd give you the name and address right now. Just send a truckload to me. Chris, Chris, you sound you sound like a very caring and warm person. It's well, Lamont and Tonelli calling from 92 KSJO. You're on the air. Oh. It- wow. He might need a pair of those. <laughs> After saying that. <laughs> what a dick. Wow. <laughs> He just started running off the mouth. What a <laughs> dick! <laughs> oh, dirty Friday. I'll Obviously tell you what, you not see, happy with their I new guest mind, in the household. I don't the past mind reaming a guy like that on Dirty Friday. No kidding. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. I'm looking for Esther. Please. Um, speaking. Hi, Esther. How you doing? This is John Squat calling from the uh, Ford. Oh, yes. Hi. Hi. And I'm going over your application for the uh, brand new Explorer. Congratulations. Oh, I've been wanting one of those forever. From what I understand. Uh, Listen, Esther, the reason I'm calling, we've got a problem with your credit application. A problem? Yes, ma'am. It seems you have a few delinquent debts in the past 
that we will not be able to uh, grant you credit for the uh, for the vehicle. Delinquent debts. Yes, ma'am. Like <clears throat> like like what delinquent debts? Well, it's it seems you haven't paid off a few of your car loans in the past, and there's been a repossession. Uh, n no, that's not that's not true. That's not accurate. There must be some kind of mistake. Well, Esther, it's it's right here on your credit history. Well, they're they've picked up somebody else's history then, because I can't that can't be mine. I've I've never, I I've never done that before. I've never not I've only had one other car loan, and I paid that completely off, and I have the paperwork to prove it. Well, Esther, we have on record two repossessions on your on your credit history. Mm, that yeah. you weren't entirely honest with us when you came in and signed this contract. Oh, of course I was honest. That because this this is not true. That's not correct. I don't know. Did you pull? What did you do? You have my correct information, my correct name, and we address have and all the information. Yes, yes, ma'am. We have all the information that you put down on your credit report. Well, are you sure it matches? Because that can't be. That can't be. Why right. now, ma'am? Have you had problems like this before? Well, actually, as a matter of fact, when I applied for my first car loan, they had. Uh, they pulled up something in error, which is why I'm thinking that you're pulling up the same thing. Now, what, what kind of error did they pull up? Well, there was somebody else's information uh, that got put on my report, and I think, okay, now I remember, it was somebody's Social Security number was like one digit uh, off of mine, and information got put onto my credit report, and <clears throat> they, were, they were picking it up as if it was mine because they weren't catching that it was one, one number, I think it was transposed or something like that. So, so Esther, you're trying to tell me that this problem persists a couple of years later again? Well, did, I did you not take care of that? I thought I'd taken care of it. I mean, we went down there. I brought all my ID and I showed them all my other paperwork and my original Social Security card. And you, you know, Esther, until you, you you're going to have to iron this out yourself, and until you do, you're going to have to bring the Explorer back because we can't, in good faith, have our vehicle out there. It's a brand new vehicle. Oh uh, no! Oh, oh no! 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 You're not going to make me bring it back until I put. I've already taken care of this somewhere, somehow. Well, it's obviously, it, it's obvious to me that you have not taken care of this properly. Well, I submitted all the paperwork to the credit bureau, and I submitted all the paperwork to the bank, and the bank gave, the other bank gave me the loan, and the other bank gave me the paperwork to show that I've paid well, off Esther, that. Well, Esther, why, why are you being a bitch? Just bring the car back, and we'll work things out when you get your credit history in, in line. Bitch? You're, wait, wait, wait. you're calling me a bitch. Well, you are being a bitch. I'm calling you up in good faith here. I'm saying you can have the car once we work this problem up, or you're just being a bitch. Well, I didn't steal this car. You gave it to me because... Wait, wait, wait. No. Inaccurate is what you guys have. Inaccurate is not what I put down. Well, you know, now, now Bob, is that your boyfriend? Now, he co-signed on this. Is that correct? Yes. Well, Bob also said to give you a call, Esther. It's Lamont and Tanelli on KSJO. You're on the radio. Oh, it's Dirty that, Friday. Uh, that asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Esther. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. What happened that to one the one sensor there? <laughs> Where's the sensor, oh, Sully? Man, yeah, I tell you it? what, he's working oh, part-time these scratching days. scratching himself. That's what he's doing. <laughs> Sully, that was your job oh. on that call. <laughs> I'm sorry. These stupid nubs are killing all of us.